Hello listeners, we are going to cover the TS2 block 5 which has the chapter in the name of Crafts and Folk Art. Now the main objectives we are going to discuss here would be the folk art and craft of India, the classification of the handicrafts and the different popular crafts which are popular in different regions of the country. Let's introduce what is handicrafts. Handicrafts are expressed as artisanal handicraft, also called artisanary, is a type of work where useful and decorative devices are made completely by hand or by using only simple tools. Since these objects are made by the skill of the hand, they carry a path of the creator as well as centuries of evolutionary tradition of making these goods. The crafts of India are diverse rich in diversity, history and religion of each state in India and reflect the influence of different empires. Throughout the centuries, crafts have been embellished as a culture and tradition within the rural communities. They are a constant source of inspiration for contemporary designers and the subject for global exhibitors representing India. Handicraft is a part of daily life and culture of India and is also aimed at transforming purely functional works into sublime works of art. Indians have always crafted goods for utilitarian purposes that is for personal use, religious rituals and for beautification as well as luxurious ones created by specialized craftsmen for specific requirements. Starting from the crude wooden toys and crafts which were excavated from Indus Valley civilization to the modern fashion accessories, the saga of Indian handicrafts has continued through the ages. India is one of the leading exporters of handicrafts in the global market with a contribution of 168.5 billion Indian rupees and the industry also provides employment to nearly 7.2 million artisans. The data is by KPMG and is from 2017 till 2019. It is known for utilizing indigenous resources, small scale of operations and traditional technology. Now, Indian crafts arts, let's discuss it. Indian crafts include metalwork, woodwork, cloth textiles and fabric, jewelry, terracotta objects, pottery, and objects which are made from cane and bamboo. India is a large exporter of textiles and visitors can buy a wide assortment of traditional Indian clothes in a variety of patterns and colors. For example, they love to buy things like saris, kurtas, dharis, floor coverings, which are usually made from cotton and are found all over India. Indian craftsmen are famous for their small details, for example, artisans can even write on the grains of rice. Some crafts such as woodwork, painting and stonework are featured as architectural elements and as objects of art. The oldest crafts are those produced in prehistoric times and by the Indus Valley Civilization people. Some of the most elaborate were created under Mughals in the 16th and 17th centuries. In India, each region has the own craft speciality and style of crafts. Works of folk art are often produced to mark the births, the holy festivals, the seasonal changes and represents the honour of God and goddesses like Lakshmi, who is a goddess of abundance, fertility and prosperity. Now, let's understand the classification of handicrafts. Broadly, the handicrafts can be divided into three parts. The first one being the folk arts. Now, folk arts is where people use it for their personal use or for a limited client base. They are usually craftsmen who meet the criteria set up by a particular group of people. They have their own distinctive designs and styles. The example being the folk embroideries from the 
village of uh, the village folk of women all over India. The second category is religious crafts. Now, religious crafts are developed around religious centers and themes. These craft items are connected with religious institutions and relevant ceremonies. Various religious places in India are specialized, specialized in particular craft items. For example, Puri in Odisha is connected with crafts like Patra Chitra, a painting on cloth and wood and stone carvings. The third category of classification of handicrafts being the commercial crafts. Craftsmen of a particular group who are specialized in a particular skill and who can completely master the craft do commercial crafts. Subgroups work for particular groups and their tools and techniques may vary. The weavers, the dyers, the printers, the goldsmiths and the carpenters are some of the commercial craftsmen. Now, let's talk about the different types of handicrafts of India. The first one being the cane and bamboo. The Shandol, Balaghat, Mandala and Siomi regions of Madhya Pradesh are main bamboo producing centers. The artisans have skillfully harmonized their age-old knowledge and techniques with new designs to meet the modern market demands. The Gond, Bega and Korku tribal communities are highly skilled in the craft of bamboo. The second being the basket and the mat makers, which are popular of the Jammu region. Kitlu to carry fruits and vegetables. They also call it as Kangri. The Sarkanda around Delhi and Haryana, which is used for making mudas. The thin bamboo strips are used to make checks. The Sikki grass, which is popular in Bihar, is used to make mats with motifs. Men work with cane and bamboo in the northeastern states and they usually make cutlery with bamboo, mats and other items like fans. Tamil Nadu is very popular again for mats and baskets are made there, which a very delicate and intricate work is done on them. Kerala has this unique item, a aristocratic, aristocratic item called Patamadi, which is being made by the craftsmen. Now let's talk about the paintings. The painting of the walls are very very popular in Gujarat and Madhya Pradesh which is mainly done to ward off the evil eye. Paintings in Maharashtra is very popular since prehistoric times and they are usually done with straight lines and patterns. Paintings in some form in all parts of the country is very popular. For example, we have Madhubani paintings, which is very popular of district of Bihar. It is a traditional art of drawing paintings on the walls for the purpose of domestic beautification and ceremonial rituals. The natural colors and dyes are used to done these paintings. As earlier we talked about, Patachutra, which is popular of Puri in Odisha, is also a scroll painting. Here, the canvas is made up of cotton cloth and usually it has mythological scenes and deities which are depicted on them. The Patachitras are used to tell stories to the village of village folk people. Lord Jagannath and Vishnu Avtar are the popular deities which are marked on these Patachitras. Traditional Tanjavur glass painting is also very very popular which is also known as embossed paintings with gems and gold. It usually uses traditional colors made from vegetable and plant pigments, which are mixed with tree gum. This art originated in Tanjavur during the Maratha period in the 18th century. Paintings were done on materials like wood, glass, mica, exotic media such as ivory, murals and manuscripts were also used. Most of the paintings were of Hindu deities and saints. Now, the next handicraft we are going to talk about is woodcraft. Olden times, the only pieces of wood furniture which were popular were for storage, chests and collapsible stands which supported the metal trays on which people usually dined. But now, we have 
the wood craft and the carving which is used in many other ways. For example, in Kashmir, walnut is the most common wood which is used for carving both for deep and shallow carving. The deodar pine tree has natural in insect repellent properties which is used for doors, jali comb or lettuce work. Usually the motifs are being made which are usually representing the common flora and fauna, especially the chinar, the trees. In Gujarat and Rajasthan, the traditional lacquered furniture is very, very popular and jharokas, doors, which are very heavily carved, are used by the people. Sankleka in Gujarat and Sadeli work of Surat is very, very popular among Gujarat and Rajasthan. In Kerala, Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh, usually teak wood is used for example, in Kerala, in Karnataka, sandalwood is used where normally the deities is used and on the door and the windows, the jali work is done. Many states also make wooden toys. For example, in Karnataka, Chanapatna toys are very, very popular. They are lacquered wooden toys which are brightly colored and are very, very popular among the villagers and the foreigners. The toys have the accreditation of the geographic indication, the Registry of Government of India as well. The poor rural women predominantly occupy the toy making profession in these villages. In Varanasi, the wooden toys are again very popular. Korjaya wood is traditionally used for making these toys. These traditional toys take the shape of humans, animals, birds, gods and goddesses kitchen utensils, furniture, musical instruments. The list is pretty long. Now let's talk about terracotta tiles and the pottery. Terracotta means the baked earth. is an impure form of kelonite which buff or brown in color. On baking, it transforms into different shades of ochre and orange. This hard semi-fired waterproof clay is used in making pottery, tiles, statues and other artifacts. Terracotta tiles are available for roofing, ceiling, flooring and the use of terracotta as roofing tile dates back to ancient period where man first discovered its sheltering possibilities. The much advanced form of advanced uh, the terracotta tiles is flooring tiles, ceiling and the wall tiles. They come in unique patterns and stunning finishes. Regional craft from different parts of India. This is a topic we are going to discuss now. We've been talking about that India is famous for its woven rugs, silk clothes, brassware, chicken embroidery, colored silks, Mughal miniatures and silver jewelry. Among the other interesting items, one can find small lacquered boxes, shawls, paintings, sandalwood and tribal jewelry. The famous Indian crafts include enamel brass from Jaipur, objects inlaid with gold and silver wire from Hyderabad, wool daris and kilims from Rajasthan, inlaid stonework from craftsmen working in Agra near the Taj Mahal. Different parts of India are famous for different kinds of crafts. As we talked about, Agra is known for its low-priced leather goods, chicken wood work fabrics, Mughal style jewellery made with semi-precious stones and marble trays vases and other items inlaid with floral designs made with semi-precious stones. Varanasi is noted for its trinkets, carpets, lingams, jewellery, metal bowls, enamel boxes, delicate silk sarees with gold and silver thread, brocades and embroideries. Lucknow is famous for its perfumes. Rajasthani jewellery features Meenakari which is an enamel work and kundankari also which is basically inlay of gems. These two forms are very popular and are found in rings, nose rings, necklaces, bracelets, boxes and turban ornaments and are made with gold, silver and a variety of precious stones. Rajasthan is also a good place to shop for gemstones, jewellery, enamel wear, marble statuary woolen carpets, cotton rugs, hand block printed items and bagru cotton fabrics, brassware, exotic blue pottery which is also very very popular and which are made from crushed quartz skills, 
and quilts are also very very popular. Jodhpur is very popular for its folk toys, tie and dye sarees and turbans, hand painted textiles, enamel brasses from Jaipur, cane furniture, hand cuff furniture, wall hangings, paintings, chunky silver jewellery, embroidered shoes, carved ivory and lot of copies of antiques. The Himalayan region are known for their wool and cashmere which is made from the finest wool of a goat. The items which are made are sweaters, blankets, quilts, Tibetan carpets are also very very popular which are and embroidered tunics for women are also very popular. The willow work baskets and mugs made from the human skulls are also very popular of these region. Kashmir is known for its pashmina shawls, emeralds, silk and wool carpets, paper mache products, crafts made from walnut, hand knotted and wool silk rugs, lacquerware, a variety of garments made of cashmere, wicker baskets are also very very popular. The other items which are popular are the embroidered shawls and a variety of stone and walnut products which are beautifully carved and furniture with dra dragon and buddhist motifs, silver and gold jewellery with the same designs and Kashmir is also famous for its gabas which are the wool blankets with a special applique work done on them. Coastal cities like Goa offer earthenware pottery and handicrafts and decorative items made from seashells and palm leaves. Southern India is famous for its cultured pearls, sandalwood carvings, inlaid furniture, rosewood carvings, spices, perfumes, seashell collections, black metal inlaid with silver, glassware, studded bangles and hand woven printed sarees. Other items include pearls, gold and silver, where Kanchipuram in Tamil Nadu is very popular for its silk sarees. One can also buy gift items from Kerala which includes rosewood and sandalwood carvings, ivory work, brass and bell metal lamps. Other decorative items include horn products, wooden toys, items which are made from coconut, objects which are inlaid with gold and silver wire from Hyderabad, bamboo and snow, straw items, lacquerware, the Kathakali dance, drama, mask, hand-woven textiles and silk and cotton garments are also very very popular. West Bengal is very popular for its terracotta and pottery handicrafts. The needle work which is called Kantha work is very popular of the state. Assam is known for its wild silks, tribal weavings and bamboo goods. Odisha, one can find intricately carved stone carvings. At Maharashtra offers fine muslin and hand woven silks. Gujarat produces handsome hand-woven tie-dyed silks and textiles and patchwork and glass wall hangings. In South India, the Mughal era wall paint hangings are very very popular. Now these hangings are centered where the artists made no attempt to model their features in light and shadow, preferring instead of an outline, their contours, costumes and adorn them with flower patterns everywhere. The artist who created these hangings first completed the design on paper or parchment and perforated the outlines. The design could then be transferred to the cotton and added them along with the colors in a technique called resist dyeing. The other popular handicrafts are the stonework all over India. The homes of healthy court officials were beautified by inset stones, tiles and window work was decorated, the walls were decorated, the fountain courtyards and the domes of palaces. The doors, shutters and the panelling of the walls and ceilings were carved and inlaid in geometric and vegetative designs. The furniture was sparse but was mainly made of marble with jali work and stone carvings. The Indian textiles popular were, since ancient times India has been famous for its fabrics. It is said that the Greeks and Romans came to Banaras to buy the finely woven cottons. These textiles are called muslins in tribute to their place of origin. Ikat weaves and permanently dyed cottons 
are equally ancient textile techniques. The popular ones we have here is cotton chandiri silk sarees, silk maheshwari, silk and where silk and cotton is put together. Silk weaves and brocades very very popular from Banaras which is called Jamdani. The Baluchuri which, in which you have the miniature paintings done on them. We have Ornis, we have Tanjore silk sarees, we have Kanjivaram silk sarees, Kerala silk sarees and Andhra again very popular for Ikat silk sarees. For tie and dye, which is popular for Rajasthan, usually the popular pattern is Gharchola, which has squares which are made of gold threads. Patola, popular of Gujarat, has the thread which is dyed before weaving. The Pochim Pali sarees with double ikat are also very popular of Odisha, and these sarees are mainly available in places called Sambalpur and Vichitrapuri. The hand printed dyed and printed fabrics are very popular of form which is called kalamkari which are done on wooden block printing. The embroideries which are popular all over India is the first one being the fulkari which means the flower crafting. This art of fulkari initially involved embellishment of orinis which is the head cloth which was embroidered with flower patterns. Over time the craft technique became so popular and complex and heavily embroidered ordinies called bag prints which are garden prints came to be in vogue. Odisha is very popular for torans, applique work. This form of embroidery is believed to have been introduced by Noor Jahan, the queen of Mughal, Emperor Jahangir. The popular embroidery we are talking here is Kasoti. Sources also attribute that chicken curry originated in East Bengal where the word chicken meant fine. Typically, the garments are first stitched and then embroidered all through skirts, sarees and table linen was also embroidered and then finished. The shawls and woolen weaves are very popular of Kashmir, usually called as Pashmina curry shawls. The folk art when we talk about is also used as whole house decorations. The walls of villages' homes are often decorated with white rice paste designs in the form of flowers and animals. These are done to invoke the blessings of gods and goddesses at weddings, birth, the harvest season or on religious festival days. The act of painting itself is ritualistic. Women in the town of Ludhia in Gujarat paint pink designs on their houses similar to those found on textiles produced in the area. The women in desert of Western Rajasthan paint their houses only once a year for the religious festival of Diwali because of the scarcity of water. The images are usually made from fresh layer of mud is applied to keep the houses wall from cracking. Peasant women in Odisha decorate their mud houses with images of leaves, vines and flowers made with white rice paste which is applied with their fingers. Images such as lotus wine, a symbol of the goddess of protection, are invoked to keep the evil spirits from entering the house. The Madhubani paintings are made by women of Bihar. They do it to celebrate the festivals and life cycle events such as marriages. The work features unique stylized images of Hindu gods and goddesses and domesticated and wild animals. Women artists also produce the work of Madhubani on handmade paper and sell these commercially. Another type of wall decorative is known as mud mirror work which is done in the Rabaris region of Gujarat. Mud houses in villages in Kutch sparkle with mirrors set into relief designs of geometric and floral patterns on inner walls. Floor decoration is also a ritualistic folk art carried out by many women to celebrate the special occasions on or merely sanctify the home. These are known as Kolam in Tamil Nadu and Kerala, Alpna in Bengal and Assam, Mandana in Rajasthan, Rangoli in Gujarat and Chokapurna in Uttar Pradesh. Now the other handicraft we are going to talk about is Indian carpets. The weaving of pile carpets, however, was not native to India and Muslims introduced the technique in the 15th century 
Because of the rich patterns and colors, this Persian style of carpets was introduced in which a symmetrical field of style flowers, birds, and sometimes animals in combat were arranged in dense arabesque patterns based upon geometric order or in picturesque designs and occasionally the Chinese symbol motifs such as the dragon, the phoenix and decorative birds and clouds were also carved. The main carpet producing areas of India today are Srinagar in Kashmir, Jaipur in Rajasthan, Amritsar in the Punjab and Mirzapur in Agra of Uttar Pradesh. Kashmir is famous for hand knotted and wool silk rugs, gabas, which are the wooden, wooden blankets with the special applique work, are very, very popular. Huktas, which is made from chain stitch embroidery from a hook called an ari, and nandes, which is uh, felted wood, wool carpets, were embroidered with woolen chain stitches. The manner which followed by the weavers of Kashmir and Amritsar is the talim which is in demand both times which ex requires both time and experience. A coded, a coded color chart indicates the number of knots to the weaver and in their respective colors. The next handicraft we're going to talk about is jewelry in India. Jewelry was traditionally bought as an investment as well as for ornamentation. It was greatly prized as signs of family wealth some wore ornaments to keep themselves covered, which was a sign of modesty, for example, to cover their ankles. Jewelry also signified the symbolic stages of life. For example, when girls reached school age, her ears and sometimes noses were pierced. A pierced nose often meant a woman is married. Also, some women in the north displayed their wealth by putting slender pins of gold and silver on a nose ring piercing. They increased the size of the ring as the wealth of the house grew. It was a tradition in the Mughal and Rajput courts to give elaborate gifts to impress and gain favours of the court people. Giving beautifully, skillfully objects that could be held or worn advertised the refined taste of the donor and was a way to advance one's position in the court. The most treasured possessions and prized gifts were jewels, visual draggers, turban ornaments, fanciful design containers made of precious materials for food and drink, incense objects, jewelry, perfume, and water bathing utensils. The writing equipments and hunting equipments were also very, very popular. The jewellery found in India includes ankle bracelets, toe rings, nose rings, as well as necklaces. Tikka and Shingar Patti were also very popular kinds of jewellery. The other items which were used along with gold and silver were ivory, copper and bronze. These were often inlaid with gems, semi-precious stones, beads or materials such as coral. The filigreed patterns of Odisha are very, very popular, where flowers, butterflies, geometric shapes for this speciality. Rajputana and Mughal royal style remains alive in Rajasthan and Delhi. This Rajasthan jewellery features Meenakari, which is the enamelling work, which was invented by Iranians and was spread by Mughals in India. It mainly used gold, which is found in rings, nose rings, necklaces, bracelets, turban ornaments, and silver was used for artifacts like boxes, bowls, spoons, and art pieces. Kundankari, which is inlaid with gems, was again very popular all over India. The gems and gold in India was used extensively for jewelry and for gilding precious statues. In Assam, Gold is fashioned into earrings and necklaces, modeled over local flora and fauna. Varanasi is very popular for trinkets and Bengal for its hair jewels. Even terracotta jewelry was very, very popular. Terracotta jewelries are made of cooking earth and making it red hard. After the earth is cooked, the items are colored in different tints to give a perfect sheen. In recent times, 
terracotta jewelry like chokers bracelets pendants necklaces create a different look if worn with either traditional or tribal dresses these jewelries are available in glaze and rough finishes ladaki jewelry of amber coral and turquoise is also very popular the metal work is popular we have bidri work koftkari enameling and bronze casting is also very popular all over also a popular craft is from punjab which is the traditional brass and copper utensil making in 2004 traditional brass and copper craft utensil making among the thadras group of punjab became very popular and was inscribed on the unesco representative list of the intangible cultural heritage of humanity the craft constitutes a traditional technique of manufacturing brass and copper utensils with certain alloys and are believed to be beneficial for the health the process begins with procuring cool cakes of metal that are flattened into thin plates and then hammered into carved shapes creating the required small bowls the plates to large pots for water and milk to huge cooking vessels and other artifacts utensils are manufactured both for ritual or utilitarian purposes both for individual and community and are used on special occasions such as weddings or at temples the process of manufacturing is transmitted orally from father to the son and the craft defines their family and kinship structure work ethic and social and cultural identity symbol which is linked with the way of life of the thadras community to conclude the unit we discussed and we explored the world of folk arts and craft to enhance our understanding of what india has to offer and how this is unique in its own way thank you